Guys, real quick, I want you to take your shirt off right now. Okay, good. Now I want you to take a look down at your belly. Are you happy with what you're seeing? If you are, that's completely fine and I respect that. But if you're not, and you're wanting to take action to achieve the body that you desire, you've come to the right place. But before taking any kind of action, you want to be prepared, okay? Preparation is number one, okay? It's the most important thing before going on any kind of journey that you're trying to accomplish, any kind of goals that you set your mind to. Bad preparation can lead to failure right before you even start. That's how important it is. My name is Anish Bud. this is Pastry Fashion. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you six things you can do to prepare for your fat loss journey. But before we get started, please hit that subscribe button. Okay, become a part of our family. I'm gonna be posting new content every single week. It's gonna be based on men's fashion, lifestyle, and fitness, and possibly traveling as well. We'll see how it goes. But you definitely wanna be subscribed. I'm gonna be making a part-by-part -part series for this kind of videos as well. So you definitely don't wanna miss out. Also give me a follow on Instagram. I'll leave the link down below. And with that being said, let's get started. At number one, you wanna take initial measurements and photos. Tracking your progress throughout your journey is gonna be your main source of motivation. It's gonna be what gives you the necessary drive to reach success. But how are you gonna keep track of your progress if you don't have anything to compare it to? You need something initially, something to compare to, something to look back to, to see how far you've come that's gonna be what keeps you going. Of course, the initial measurements I'm talking about here is your body weight and your body fat percentage. Measuring your weight is easy. Everyone knows all you need to do is step on the scale, wait for the, the scale to start reading your weight, step off, and then it just presents you with your weight. But measuring your body fat is somewhat a bit more difficult. There are many ways to measure your body fat, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite way to measure my body fat. All you're gonna be needing for this technique is a tape measurement. And you're gonna be measuring two areas of your body. The first area you wanna start is your abdominal and waist area. You're gonna be going around your belly button. So go all the way around. Really important part is to breathe in. Do not breathe out or flex your abs, okay? You don't wanna fool yourself because you're trying to make it as realistic as possible and it'll give you more room to improve. So breathe in, measure. I'll show you guys how I'm doing it somewhere over here. Record the data somewhere. And then the next measurement technique, you wanna go around your neck. It's gonna go right below your Adam's apple area. And again, it's gonna be over here somewhere. So you wanna go around and then record and that's it. You're almost done. Next thing you wanna do is go to Google and search body fat calculator. It's gonna show a bunch of websites you can go to to uh, put all your data and then find out what your body fat is. The one that I'm using right now currently is linear software. So as you can see here, you can put your age, gender, weight, and height. You scroll down and then the, left, the right side area will show the tape measurement calculator. Put in your data in there, hit calculate, and then it's gonna show your body fat percentage right at the bottom. The left side is for another technique. Uh, you use a caliper to, to uh, squeeze a portion of your skin in different areas and then it'll calculate your body fat from there as well. But it's another type of measurement technique that it's a bit more complicated and I'll get into it in another video. I just find that this technique is a lot easier to calculate. The most important part between these two, measuring your body fat and your body weight is you wanna be consistent, okay? Consistency is key. So make sure you measure these two things in the morning, right after you wake up. Your body weight can be measured daily. You wanna monitor that every single day, but your body fat, you can do bi-weekly. So once every two weeks or once every week. Doesn't have to be as often because you won't see that big of a change until you know every single week. Final thing you can do is you can make visual comparisons. Um, you can go to Google and search body fat percentage reference and it's gonna show a table with different levels of body fat percentages of different guys and different girls. And you can just compare it with the body that you have right now. Again, you wanna compare it in the morning before you eat anything or drink anything because that's gonna add some fluctuations to your weight and your size. You wanna make sure that you're completely neutral for this one. You don't wanna breathe in too much. You don't wanna breathe out too much or flex your abs. Just be completely neutral, be completely relaxed, and that's how you're gonna get the most accurate measurements when doing visual comparison. Step number two is to download a calorie tracking app. 
A lot of people that don't do this fail in their fitness goals, whether it be cutting or bulking up. Estimating your calories is just not enough. You need to track down every single food that you eat if you're really serious about achieving your goals. These apps are gonna act as your tour guide to success. Some great apps that I have used already are MyFitnessPal and MyNetDiary. They're both great apps, great friendly interface that you can use. What I like to do on a week by week basis, I just put in a bunch of food that I'm gonna be eating and I check how many portions of each food that I need in order to achieve the amount of calories that I want. And it's really simple to use. Some products have packages that have barcodes. You can use your phone from the app itself to scan the barcode and then enter the amount of portions or weight that you're gonna be eating for that kind of food. And it's gonna show how much uh, nutrients and nutrition and the amount of calories that are in that kind of food. Or you can type in the name of your food and the portion that works as well, whatever's easiest for you. But the main thing is you need to weigh each of your food, which leads me to my next point. At number three, you need to invest in a scale. I'm talking about body scales and food scales. Your body scale, obviously, to measure your weight and record your progress, but your food scale, which is super important to record the amount of food that you're gonna be putting into your body and seeing how much calories and how much macronutrients you're gonna be getting, which is really important for when you're cutting down. You don't wanna be eating so little calories that you're feeling tired all the time. You don't wanna be eating over your calorie uh, intake which is gonna lead to you gaining more weight. Sorry guys, I had to change my shirt. It was getting a little hot in here. Uh, my air, my AC is not working right now. Anyways, one thing I wanna keep you guys on track with is there are a couple of weight scales that include body fat percentage readings. You don't wanna go off that. They usually overestimate by a lot. So definitely don't invest in that. Save your money and go for the regular ones that just reach your body weight in kilograms or pounds. Coming in at number four, you wanna prepare a solid meal plan. Key things to take from here, your protein intake. Okay, for when you're cutting, you wanna you want to take at least 0.7 grams to one gram of protein per pound of your body weight. What does this mean? If I weigh 165 pounds, I wanna be taking in at least 165 grams of protein or 0.7 times that, whatever that leads to. But basically, that's the amount of protein you need to preserve your muscle mass while you're cutting down. Because believe it or not, when you cut down, you're losing body fat, but you're also losing your muscle. And we want to preserve as much muscle mass as we can. The next thing I want to address is your diet. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're on a keto diet, full-fledged vegetarian. The main thing that those diets have in common is that they're on a caloric deficit. This is the most important part because you can even go on a lean bulk while on a keto diet. Doesn't make a difference. Just your calorie intake, okay? Most people who actually go on that those diet with really weak mindset actually fail really early on because those kind of diets put a lot of restrictions on your diet, on your meal plan, and a lot of people can't cope with that because they can't eat the food that they love, just keeps them stressed and they just eventually give up. So the main culprit to helping you lose weight here is going on a caloric deficit, make sure to go on a caloric deficit of 20 to 25% of your maintenance. What does this mean? You wanna to go to this app that I showed early on. I'm gonna show you my net diary, for example. So basically, you go to the goal plan, set your target weight to zero, and it's gonna show you the amount of calories that you need to put into yourself in order to maintain this weight. So you won't be losing weight or gaining weight. So from here, we're gonna be using this formula we're going to be subtracting the calorie that you got by 25% of that calorie itself. And you'll get the caloric deficit that you need. Anything less than this is going to lead to a huge loss in muscle mass, no matter how much protein you're eating, because you're going to be losing way too much weight in one week and your body's going to start getting weak and you're going to start losing strength. So it's important to maintain this balance, stick to 20 to 25%. I'm going to be going into more detail on the kind of food you should add to your meal plan in a later video. So if you guys wanna see that, definitely leave a comment down below. But for now, let's go to number five. Number five, and that is to have a solid workout plan. You want your workout plan to consist of three days of resistance training. For me, I usually go for six because I believe that's a, more, that's a better way to achieve results and I can achieve results faster that way. And the biggest misconception I want to address here is cardio. Okay, 
a lot of people think when they're cutting down they have to do a bunch of cardio which don't get me wrong it is great for your cardiovascular health and it's also great for losing weight but one thing people don't tell you is doing too much cardio can actually burn muscle mass as well which is definitely not what we want here why do you think marathon runners are super skinny and they have really skinny arms and skinny legs that's the problem that doesn't mean you should get rid of cardio entirely no you can stick to cardio but i suggest if you're doing cardio every day stick to maybe 20 minutes each and do it after a workout never before a workout the routine that i usually uh, develop is i do six days resistance training and then i do two days of cardio and high intensity cardio so i do 20 to 30 minutes of hit workout which stands for high intensity interval training i think and that is you go super slow at the beginning then super fast for a couple seconds slow fast slow fast and just switch on and off the workout plan should consist of targeting every single muscle groups in your body okay so if you have a workout plan from your bulking phase that targets every single muscle in your body that's perfect you can actually just stick with that workout plan for the remainder of this journey just focus on changing your diet and you should be golden for people who are just starting out exercising and they don't have any solid foundation on what kind of workouts to do each day i'm going to be making another video on separating the kind of workouts you should be going into each day and different kind of training systems you can uh, you can add to your routine so stay tuned for that number six we have prepare yourself mentally patience commitment consistency perseverance they're all key characteristics here okay you want to be patient because you're not going to get results overnight most people see significant results on average three to four months into the program or into any kind of cutting regime so you need to set a realistic goal a realistic timeline give yourself three months give it your all for this remaining three months staying committed and consistent is key okay consistency i say that all the time on my instagram you're gonna be so lazy to get off your couch from watching Netflix and to go to the gym, but it's worth it, okay? You need to keep doing this for three weeks. I read a study somewhere on research, it says, it takes three weeks for a human to develop something as a routine or as a habit. So gotta push it through for three weeks and it'll become a part of your routine and it'll be just that much easier. You need to hold yourself accountable. Okay, I'm watching you right now. What I mean by this is when you go out, okay, with your friends, they're not going to have the same goals that you do some people might be trying to gain weight some people might not even care what they're eating and they're not even exercising and leading a healthy life but you have a different goal you have a different path you have a different journey to follow stick to that journey i have to weigh every single one of my food in front of my family and they laughed at me okay and i might have overkilled it every single restaurant i go to before i make any order i put it into the app to see how much calories and macros are in each food. And a lot of my friends just laugh at me, but at the end, it's you who's gonna reap the benefits. Because at the end, you guys saw on my Instagram, I made a huge transformation to 10% body fat, and a lot of people DM me. I think that was one of my most engaged posts later, like really early on in the year. A lot of people asked me for advice on how I did that. And let me tell you, it's all about accountability. You know yourself better than anyone. So be consistent and be strict on yourself. Three months is all it takes. Guys, that's it. This has been six things you need to do to prepare for your fat loss journey. If you guys like this, please smash the like button, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe, okay? I've got more content coming in, both style and fitness. So you definitely don't wanna miss out on a single one. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Pastry fashion, out. Let's run away from this old town or where we going I wanna take you somewhere baby where it's snowing We're young and free let's take a dip into the ocean Just come with me and we can fix our heart that's broken